My name is uh, Dr. Mark Nason. I'm a professor of African American Studies and History at Fordham University. And my most popular course, which I've taught for the last 16 years, is called From Rock and Roll to Hip Hop. From Rock and Roll to Hip Hop is based on the premise that you can learn a tremendous amount about history from looking at music, and you can learn a tremendous amount about music by looking at history. So here are two popular music forms, each of which was spawned by urban African Americans, which then spread around the country and around the world, but they emerged in very different historical moments, and their fate was very, very different in terms of how the music was appropriated. So, if you look at rock and roll, rock and roll was a product of post-war American prosperity where African Americans made enough income to support a whole subculture of popular music reflected in clubs, uh, in uh, radio stations catering to them, and also in small record companies recording their music. And the Big Bang occurred when this music began to attract a listening audience among younger whites, and uh, entrepreneurs saw the possibility of rebranding this music under a different name to a multiracial, largely white audience. And this happened in the early uh, and mid-1950s under the label Rock and Roll. And it swept the country and it pro uh, basically produced an upheaval in race relations that got the country extremely upset uh, because you had young whites listening to dancing and singing to music that was mildly eroticized and had roots in the black community. Uh, and what happened was there was a reaction against it on the part of political leaders uh, and on the part of record companies uh, and the press. And the music, after about four years of being incendiary and multiracial, became somewhat sanitized but it still had this incredible appeal to the entire country. And what happened was in the period where it was sanitized, you had uh, the artist coming from England, taking the uh, original African-American music and reinventing it, but you also had this brilliant black-owned record company, Motown Records, who understood the politics of respectability and had music created by entirely black artists who met the standards of respectability that had been imposed and who created mega hit after mega hit. The, what was going on in rock and roll was almost like a cultural subtext to what was happening politically in the civil rights movement. So uh, you had young blacks and young whites uh, coming together, even in the era of segregation, creating the cultural soil in which a political movement could challenge segregation successfully. And in both instances, the politics of respectability were central to uh, the popularity of uh, and success of the enterprise. So uh, what you have in the 1960s is absolutely beautiful music coming out of some of the toughest urban areas in the country. Uh, beautiful harmonic music that people uh, to this day uh, romanticize. Now, segue 20 years later into hip hop. It's a very different time. The factories that, uh, whose prosperity uh, created the income that fueled rock and roll are starting to close. The Vietnam War has wrought tremendous damage. Uh, there's white flight. Uh, there is deinvestment. And uh, the fabric of a lot of cities is, is collapsing. 
at the same time that affirmative action is opening up opportunities for middle class blacks and Latinos. So in, uh, in the South Bronx, which is the epicenter of decay, a new musical form occurs where you are basically taking two turntables and a mixer and creating music that is hyper percussive and danceable and then having people uh, uh, put poetry over it. When it starts, nobody thinks this has commercial potential. Um, but as it turns out, what was happening in the South Bronx was going to spread throughout the country and the world. So a music that had the sound of a city in collapse, but also had an air of defiance, was going to uh, have this incredible ability to spread. Um, and you think about the words of Grandmaster Flash's The Message, uh, broken glass everywhere, people pissing on the stairs, you know, I just don't care. I can't take the smell. I can't take the noise. Got no money to move out. You know, I got no choice. And compare that to songs like In the Still of the Night, uh, which were products of the great doo-wop songs or Dancing in the Street. Um, and so there is now a new music being created in the inner city, which is spreading throughout the world. But one of the differences is it is much more difficult for white people to appropriate this new form of music than it was for rock and roll. There's no equivalent to the Beatles and the Rolling Stones in hip hop because hip hop has an, uh, uh, a theory behind it of authenticity. You have to show your connection to this gritty urban reality. So when this is basically a synopsis of these two moments in American and African-American music history, which changed music in the world, they're very different, but to understand it, you have to go through the whole uh, 50 years of American post-war economic development, as well as changes in race relations. And it's an incredibly enjoyable course to teach and a very challenging one as well.